Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests, and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everybody. How is your October going? I know today is October 1st. After a week of rain and cold temperatures and getting down into the 30s, we finally had our first really hard, what they call a killing frost. The garden is starting to look very very fall like i did pick up the fairy garden already because i knew it was coming it's been quite warm for the first part of september for us but now we're into typical weather it's down in the 30s at night 50s and 60s during the day with a couple days where it was raining and it was only 45. Yeah, those are terrible days at work because they hadn't turned the heat on yet. It's a 100-year-old building with an old boiler system. Well, that is on now, so there's no, no problem keeping the building warm. But for a couple of weeks there, it was a little chilly. And we had to turn the heat on in the house. So if you remember right, in August, we had to replace the furnace and air conditioning unit. I forgot how bad that can stink. Even with my sense of smell being impaired, I could sure smell that burning off all the oil and dust. Uh, Why are things so stinky? (laughs) But we have a new furnace and the house is staying nice and toasty warm. I've had to crack out the quilts on the beds and... My snuggle quilts for football games are well in abundance all over the living room. And I've got my fall decorations up and um, Halloween things will start coming out versus September, which was fall. I really wanted to get last year's bats and booze quilt all quilted and finished, but I haven't yet. Maybe by Halloween I'll have it quilted. We'll see. Definitely got to find my Tula Pink De La Luna and get some of my other spooky decorations out versus the cute fall things I have. So what have I been up to? Well, things are still moving along at a much slower pace, but I saw the first Cup of Cheer mug for the Fat Quarter Shop Christmas Time Mystery Quilt. And I attempted to sew it. And I made a terrible mistake in it. I rotated the cup size the wrong way. So it was too wide. And I fixed it. And it's a finished coffee cup. Or a chocolate mug or however you want to make it. It's really fun to do. And it's not too hard to sew. But... I still um, made a big mistake and I realized my piecing and pattern reading skills uh, are very, very dull and I need to sharpen them up. I liked it so much I made it again in the right size and I thought, well, maybe I won't finish the Christmas mystery. I don't know how many blocks it is and I didn't want a big commitment. Then I've been watching a lot of Fat Quarter Shop's Um, YouTubes on Fridays and they have a floss tube for cross stitch on Tuesdays and Kimberly has said that it's only four blocks I'm like oh wow I can do four blocks and make a little wall hanging for my door at work for Christmas time what's really nice is that she does a little video tutorial on every block 
for these mysteries and it really helped bring back a lot of the oh yeah that's how we do that type of thing where when I'm reading it um I still I have a reading processing problem before COVID and since I've gotten sick it was a, it's been a problem <laughs> so that's probably why I made my big mistake I've got to slow down and read the patterns and highlight things like trim square down to certain size once you do a half square triangle makes a big difference in how your final block <laughs> turns out anyway I laugh about it because if you didn't you'd get upset so I did that and now I'm up to the third of the fourth blocks these are free patterns and it's not too late you can go on and look for Christmas time mystery um, on Fat Quarter Shop and you can look for YouTubes and she shows the tutorials she's traditionally piecing them and also gives you options if you happen to have a whole bunch of like triangle on a roll pieces or um, thangles that would help you with half square triangles or flying geese so the second block was called hard candy Christmas and it's really cute hard yeah hard candy is the name of the block but it has a lot of flying geese which are not my strengths and these are small they're like one and a half by two and a half inch flying geese units um, it took me a really long time but I got the block done and then I was terribly distressed because it's not the same size as the coffee mug but the third block came out and it's even a different size so I don't know how they're going to put all of these different blocks together probably like a jigsaw puzzle and um, the third block I have spent all yesterday afternoon when I was home um, from work I had the day off and I'm working on the one called Christmas cards now you have to really look at it and make good fabric choices to make it look like a Christmas card that's partially open and sitting on a table but it also has a whole bunch of flying geese so hmm, yeah flying geese some of my flying geese are the right size and some of them the little triangles in the middle are too small but I did the best that I could do and I'm okay with it it's just a four block cutesy little Christmas wall hanging and it's not going in a quilt show I have to keep telling myself that it's not going in a quilt show who's going to get up with the magnifying glass and realize that the points are clipped on one or two or that there are a few flying geese that aren't exactly the right size that's okay I have to let it go let it go and Silk and Sodder has a great mantra almost that comes up quite a bit in my silk and center journal of breaking up with perfection there's a lot of journaling exercises and every day is like a seven or eight minute little tiny podcast that you can start your day out with what they call daily rituals and she talks about this quite a bit for people who are like me you know the people who expect a lot out of themselves and perfection it comes easily yeah yeah breaking up with perfection is a good thing and that will come up again later so long arming has been super super slow um, I have one more more row left on a customer's quilt it is a bed size quilt but it, it's not quite a queen size and I took me all of September and probably this weekend to finish it and it's not really custom just a couple different zones where I change stitches but it's been a brain exercise to try to get it done and I'm finding my legs are pretty weak and I'm trying to to remedy that but I can only stand and do one row and that's it so one row every couple of days and I got it done in, in a month usually I would do one or two rows a day in years previous but I have to just go with the pacing process because when I try to do too much I still get a little bit tired and you know what when you're always going on at a blistering pace which tends to be my go-to um, overdrive right trying to pack too much in a day it's, it's just really not healthy for you 
So I'm just learning to do what I can on good days. So a whole month to do a long arming quilt and I'm happy that I got one done. And so that takes it down to four customer quilts and I still have my own, which I'm going to finish them all um, over the course of the winter. Because the ones I have for myself, a lot of them are just small little test pieces or experimental projects. They're not bed size quilts, so they will go much faster. And you just the thing is I'm finding is I want to do a good job and I'm savoring the process, whether it's quilting or doing this Christmas card block that took me several hours yesterday um, versus, you know, would have been a couple of hours. I probably would have had it done in years previous. But you know what? I'm savoring it. I'm going slow. I'm being super careful with the rotary cutter. And with all of the care with the rotary cutter, it's made me realize I still haven't ordered the um, anti-cut gloves. I have them on my Amazon list and that is going to get ordered today. I have downloaded an app to my phone and it has made Amazon shopping so easy. Um, to the point where I have to be super careful because I could be like point click, point click, point click every day, you know, because it's got your credit card preloaded. It's got addresses preloaded. I just ordered my granddaughter's birthday. The youngest granddaughter, I can't believe it, is in kindergarten. Let's talk about the grandkids for a minute. They went to school this fall and they've been homeschooled for a couple years because of the pandemic. And so the older girls went to preschool and then a half of a kindergarten. My daughter has a degree in education and she said, you know, I think I'll just homeschool them for a year, just or half a year, just to see how things go. And it wound up being a couple of years. So the older girls went to third grade and are loving it, totally loving it. The hardest part is the twins were separated in classrooms. Now, I know she could have made a stink about the girls being in the same class because it's really hard on one of the girls at first. But I think they're finding that all of that togetherness over the last couple of years, they're flying on their own and doing quite well. But they're also learning how to navigate social situations. And you know, you know, if you know, you know, here, you remember lunch hour? Yeah, that's always been um, a little bit of a problem for me. I guess that's why I started coming home for lunch. <laughs> when I was a kid, you were allowed to walk home if you lived close enough to the school and we had an hour for lunch. So I, I did that. And I still have that ritual of coming home for lunch because I live very close to my office. I digress. Anyway, the girls, the older girls are having a great time. None of these girls are behind. My daughter did an excellent job. So now they're learning more about social situations and um, being in class all day. So they're having a good time. So the youngest started kindergarten and she is having a blast. All of them had birthdays. Um, the twins are in September and the youngest girl is in October, about a month apart. And I got them all these little tiny Squishmallow play sets. Now, if you don't know what Squishmallows are, let me tell you, they are the cutest things since Thai Beanie Babies. They have the large size ones, which is where it started. They're really large, like bed pillows, and they're the squishiest, softest toy cuddle toy thing, pillow, stuffed animal, however you want to call it. And they are in all of these like amigurumi styles. So like these big blobby pillows, but they have like little tiny owls and well, the big ones are Owls oh, and Baby Yoda, which is their favorite, by the way. And all kinds of fish and animals. Um, there, One is a fairy. It, she's so cute. They all have names, and they the names are kind of like the Beanie Babies. And the girls play with them. Well, last year for their birthdays, I found tiny ones that are about three inches tall. And because I didn't want to buy any more of these monstrosity big ones, because I mean, 
how many can you have in a house before it explodes, right? With three girls. <laughs> so I bought the tiny ones. And this year they came out with play sets for the tiny ones. So they probably between the three of them all have about of the tiny, tiny ones, um, probably 20 a piece because I bought complete sets last year and they would build Lego houses and other play sets. So this year I bought the play sets and they came with each play set came with two new little Squishmallows and they're kind of like doll houses. So one was a shop Bing center one was a sweet tea house and the other one was a cottage super cute i think i want a squishmallow playhouse because on tiktok it was the cutest little quote that said squishmallows is all of the dopamine put inside it to make everyone completely happy <laughs> and i'm like yeah if they could uh Put all that into a Squishmallow. Maybe I need to get a couple tiny ones for my collection of tiny things because I'm into tiny and miniature and that just makes everybody go, oh, they're so cute. So anyway, the Squishmallow set was ordered and will be there well in time for the birthday. So that's been my <laughs> fun times. And I've been just kind of... A, Looking at all of the online shopping things is so easy to get yourself into trouble. But what I've been doing, and, and do you do this? I buy stuff and then I do get like buyer's remorse. So currently I've decided I'm not going to do that. But to satisfy the urge, a friend of mine told me about this in the past. And I think it's a good habit. You go through and Put the things that you really think you want in a cart and then make yourself sleep on it for three days or more. And then you go and reevaluate what you put in your online shopping cart, say for Amazon or mine happens to be Fat Quarter Shop a lot. And then think about it. And it really eliminates a lot of impulse buying. So I'm making lists of things um, also on my phone for things I want to buy and to do's and it's really been helping me to not just point click buy and then have a whole house full of boxes that I never open. I know people who have been like that. It's, it's a sad addiction but I could be one of those people super easily. So to to remedy that urge to buy something I just put it in a cart and then I am making myself not buy it for three or four days. And I've been disciplined enough to do that. And most of the time when I go back and look at it, I empty the cart because I'm like, you know, that was super cool. And the excitement of seeing somebody use it on a video or the the FOMO, you know, of, oh my gosh, that looks great. I have to have it. But then I'm like, yeah, no. But one thing I do have in my cart that I'm going to buy at Fat Quarter Shop. Have you seen this? Um, they call it a tri rack trim tool. So it's for making those long skinny triangles on a rectangle. And you trim them down. The, the YouTube video and the free pattern that they have is called Black Diamond Quilt on Fat Quarter Shop. I'm, it's a 5 or a $6 trim tool that would make that super easy and you make them oversized and trim them down and they're the perfect size every time and I have a plan for using that particular product in something else that I saw so I have been really into YouTube so I can highly recommend several YouTube channels and one being Kimberly Jolly's Fat Quarter Shop um, she has many live streams and they record them and you can watch them later, which is awesome. She has that for floss tube and for sewing on Fridays. It's a um, usually about an hour. It's kind of like a podcast. So it's great to turn it on and listen to while you're sewing, kind of like this podcast. And then she'll do tutorials for their sew alongs on different days as well as um, some other 
types of videos that she has where they're trunk shows. So when I'm home alone, um, I got really into watching all of the trunk shows. And this is one of those weekends. And a couple weeks ago was one of those weekends. And if I talked about this in a podcast previous, I forgive me, but she did a Scrappiness is Happiness with Lori Holt and they did a trunk show of every single quilt in that book. And that book is now on my in my shopping cart, but I'm not buying it yet because it's $35. And there's been a, two other books that they've come out with at that quarter shop. Um, one is a self-published book. It's called um, Half Yard Quilts. They did a trunk show for that. And then, of course, they're having a special sew along where I'm more interested in that sew along where they're taking one block from most, I think every, I think every quilt in that book and put it together for a sampler that's pretty stunning. And then they did another, uh, a Moda's favorites book that came out and they did trunk show with all of those. I'm finding those trunk shows are so inspiring. And um, so, yes, the Fat Quarter Shop has a great channel. Their production is top notch. I mean, it's a professional production crew. And so it's like watching a TV show. And Kimberly has gotten very, very good on camera. And she's pretty funny. And she's pretty, she has a real dry sense of humor. And what I like is that sometimes during the live this last week, she made a um, not a mistake, but the black wasn't super perfect. And she went with it. And I'm like, yes, finally somebody who shows you something that isn't super perfect. Now you have to remember she is the owner of that online quilt store. So she can use a million products for you to purchase. Um, but we know that you can put it in your shopping cart and not have to buy it because consumerism is something that I'm noticing, you know, is a huge thing in online um, social media as well as YouTube channels. And I'm just kind of like over that part of my life. I, I don't get caught up as much in the FOMO for crafting and creating supplies because I have a very full craft room I almost said classroom but no I meant craft room the craft room cleanup how is it coming along painstakingly slow but it's happening um but this is going to be a all winter process so it always looks messy before it gets better and I have to keep telling myself that but what I'm not, I'm trying to do is look at things and like, do I want to keep it? Does it spark joy? Well, most of it does. That's why I have it. But I'm trying to use it up and not continue to buy things just because it's on sale or because it looks cute or things like that. So I've been using up some supplies in there. So what I did is I was watching TikTok one afternoon. That's kind of my decompressing time for a five minute break at work and someone made a Dollar Tree wreath and it was with a wreath frame from the dollar store and I had one and they use a little wooden sign which I bought a couple years ago and I didn't and I hung it up but it's like eh, it's okay on its own but then I watched them make this wreath and I'm like I have all of these supplies. I have two bags of leaves that I bought probably 10 years ago to decorate a table for a function. And I've used them in a couple projects, but I still had a whole bunch. So I covered the wire wreath with strips of ugly fabric that was kind of, you know, cream and green and stuff for fall colors. I've used it before and I've had enough of it. It's directional stripes and it doesn't it's not easy to work with for quilts. So I cut it up in strips. I covered, wrapped the wire frame, glued it on, hot glued a billion of those leaves that were um, in those packages. I glued the sign on, added a little um, Halloween, not Halloween, but a fall pick with pumpkins and stuff. It, it took me an hour and it was like instant gratification. And I used up supplies in my craft room and I hung it 
<laughs> in my mudroom. So it's at the entrance and it makes a big, huge fall impact. And it says friends gather here on the sign. So it's very fall, but I can leave it up all the way through to Thanksgiving when I hang up my Christmas wreath. So anyway, if you want to see a picture of it, it's on my Instagram account. Um, as I think on our creative souls, Instagram, cause that's more of my crafting stuff that my sister and I do on Instagram. So using up things, trying to rearrange it, trying to consolidate boxes. And that led me to that orphan bin in Scott. I don't know how many blocks in it, tons of them. So I found leftover arrows and I put that together. I talked about that last time into a tiny little arrows quilt with large oversized arrows. It's it's a tabletop or size. And then I realized I still have a million of these orphan blocks. And I have been looking up tutorials on how to make a quilt coat. But I didn't want it to be super thick and heavy. And I need something that moves and breathes a little bit. And I came across laundry basket quilts, Adita, Adita Satir, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She used a sweatshirt. Yeah, a sweatshirt for the base. And she said, you don't even have to line it if you don't want to. So I asked my husband if he had a bunch of sweatshirts that he doesn't wear. And I said, will any of these work for sacrificing for a quote coat for me? Because they're oversized for me, but they don't fit him great. And he said, yes. Yeah. So I took the bright red one because I thought, wouldn't it be cute to have a bright red lining for your jacket? And I am doing it as a kind of a quilt as you go. Just kind of improv piecing these blocks on the sweatshirt and I'm not 100% done yet. I did one sleeve and I've laid out a bunch of blocks for different sleeves and I'm kind of putting them on a quilt as you go in zones and then I'm taking a page out of Kate's Last Homely House YouTube channel. Highly recommend. She is did one in a Boro style with leftover jeans and Boro has kind of that um, Japanese style stitching with um, the jeans and denim and indigo. She, it, her jacket's very cool. But mine is going to be wild and crazy with all these quilt blocks just improv all over it. And I'm going to do some hand stitching and just to give it a little pizzazz with some embroidery floss. I have all that pearl cotton left over from that other project too. And I thought it would be fun to put a few big stitches on it in the areas where the block might need a little something, something with the quilting or embroidery, but I don't want to over quilt the jacket and make it heavy. So that's where I'm going with it. And then you do bind it at the end so that all of your edges are covered around the edges of the jacket that you see. And on the inside, the seams will be exposed. And I'm okay with that. It's a sweatshirt coat. And it's not really, I don't care if the seams, I'm going to zigzag them all, you know, so they don't fray because I can't figure out how to run my <laughs> serger. Otherwise, I'd serge all of the edges. But this is really a really brilliant way to use up all of these blocks and recycle things in my house that were just destined for the trash or goodwill. So I'm having a lot of fun with the quilt jacket and I'm hoping to have it done and I can wear it around the house or I can take it to the office and wear it on cold days. But now they got the heat turned down so most likely it will stay here at home and it'll be my football wearing jacket on chilly days in the house because the house my house gets cold because I keep the heat turned down to about 65. I will say my husband and I have bumped it up a time or two because we aren't as hot blooded as we used to be <laughs> and um trying to keep it turned down though because of expense. 
So that is another project I'm working on is a quilt coat. And um, it's going along very well, the experiment and using up things in my classroom. The classroom. Craft room. Why do I keep saying that? It's like an educational experience every time I go in there. Yeah, I bump my toe on something and I say words that I make up that I have no idea. <laughs> I It's just got too many things. And the, it's a very tiny room. It barely holds held a twin bed when my son used it as a little boy and it was a home office you know it's a tiny room but you could do a really nice home office in there but i have all the storage of my craft things and the cutting table but i still sew on my dining room table right off that now um i want to say i did something really fun recently and there was a little town south of us, about 20 miles, in Grayling, and they had a quilt show with 50 quilts. The little guild there has not put on a show since the 1990s, and they decided they wanted to do a show. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Their challenge for the guild was Nine Patch, and it was very inspiring because you got to see um, the different themes of the block exchange. So each member did several nine patches to exchange with every other's um, guild member who participated. And they had three or four different themes. Like one was um, Civil War reproduction fabric nine patches that were traded and then put into a quilt that was entered into the show. You know, every person got these quilts. So it's interesting to see what everybody did differently. One was more bright colors. One, you know, they each had themes. What was super fun is that humble little nine patch made some of these fantastic quilts. One lady used the nine patches and put them on point and then put a Dresden plate in between them. That was pretty. One lady did them straight. And then it was a Civil War one. She hand appliqued some really pretty flowers and birds on the, the the border and the quilting was amazing so it was a lot of fun and then i saw that several people did hand pieced ones and this beginner lady she was a beginning quilter did a hand pieced quilt with hand stitch that was so tiny and perfect i was like oh my gosh it was I, I used to stitch like that when I was in my 20s, but I have not been able to do that since my 20s for lots of reasons, <laughs> but it was gorgeous. So it was super cool to see all kinds of different types of quilts in a show that wasn't themed and it wasn't um, color themed. I've been to shows like that and you're like, come on, I want some inspiration. This is totally inspiring. And it was kind of a hodgepodge of everything. Oh, somebody had a candle wick. Do you remember I talked about that? It was a huge um, queen size quilt that the blocks were all candle wicking um, designs and she hand quilted cables in it. Now I've done a large sampler quilt Probably in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was the last one that I did hand stitching. And of course, I did cables on all of the sash sashing that was very popular. So my friend and I went, and it was something you could have blown through in 20 minutes. But I hadn't seen my friend in months because of a lot of things. But she was working, she's retired, but she was working all summer Um helping her husband do um, outside work and then our just paths just didn't cross so we chatted and she had taken a, several classes because she lives closer to Grayling than I do she kind of lives in between and she had taken classes by the chairperson of the the quilt show and the lady who was the quilt show chairwoman she took us on a private tour and we chatted the whole time for a couple hours and she talked about the story behind every quilt and it was so much fun they also had a raffle and a little quilt garage sale and anyway it was a blast and she bought three or four little rulers for like 
10 bucks and she told me because I pointed them out to her I already had them she goes oh my gosh I'm glad you saw those because I've used them every day since we've been to that show so I need to get out more and see my friends do some quilt things quilt group met this week and I was able to join them for half of it um, I started to not feel well so I couldn't stay for the whole thing but it was really nice to, to see all the ladies and the lady who I made that quilt that she entered into the snobby quilt guilds show. She came with that quilt and shared it again. It was so good to see it again. And of course, she told the story with everybody and it was just kind of a bittersweet moment. But the, the quilt's so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And... I have to say that completes my list. But, oh, the other YouTube shows. I got sucked down to hurricane watching yesterday. Because Hurricane Ian, I believe it is Ian, made landfall in Florida twice and then went up to Charleston. So, I have a lot of acquaintances and family who live in Florida. Everyone came through it oh, alive. You know, I'm waiting to hear about property damage for some friends who live in Naples, but it looked horrible. So, Ryan Hall, y'all, that's the name of his channel. He is a meteorologist who decided he didn't like working for news channels, and he does lives during major hurricanes. And as it head into Charleston, I had yesterday off because I wasn't feeling well. I remember quote guild was the night before and I just didn't feel well. He did a live stream and I found out that Charleston got hit really hard. It sounds like with flooding, even though it's category one, my aunt lives 20 miles a little south of Charleston. They got a lot of rain and wind and the whole family um, rode it out and there's a baby and they're doing fine and i was glad because they've had she lives on an island and there's usually a lot there's a lot of rain and some flooding but so far so good nobody has lost um, a lot of property or life so i'm very very happy so now i'm just waiting my daughter lives in virginia beach with the grandchildren and her and her husband were all working from home with a couple of friends because they live on the edge uh where that hurricane was yesterday and they were getting a lot of rain of course there's always flooding with a lot of rain and power outages is a big concern but i was watching ryan hall y'all and as she was getting ready to run to the store i said they just issued a tornado watch and warnings close to you and she has a weather radio and then it went beep 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 so she didn't go to the store right away until those watches were safe anyway so ryan hall y'all if you're into weather and i'm a nerd about weather he makes predictions and i found him over the last couple of years for um snow forecasts for the united states he's from kentucky and he, his production is super top notch. It was just like watching a weather channel show. He has a lot of famous storm chasers that were doing live feeds with him and for this hurricane. And he has other meteorologists who work from home and it, it was top notch. But he also has some fun things like, um, he, he has a stick called a snow meter and I'm going to buy one. And every time it snows, you're supposed to take this measuring stick out in the yard and show him how much snow you got to see if his prediction was right or wrong. And if you do that, you're entered into a little giveaway. So I'm like, I'm so into it. <laughs> he has also a lot of uh, fundraising when there are hurricanes and things like that. His audience donates and he gets the money to people and to people who can buy things and actually hand it to people who are in need after such a horrible, horrible event. So our thoughts and a lot of prayer is going out to people who, um, who have suffered during those hurricanes. 
So I was on a lot of, several hours while I was sewing, I had my phone playing Fat Quarter Shop, trying to keep my mind occupied, and also Ryan Hall. And I would have to look and see where landfall, when it, when the hurricane hit land. So yeah, that was pretty sad. And he's always given new information and updates and tornado things and snow things. Now, another channel that I have really, really just started watching and I enjoyed because I do watch Nicole Spore based on um, some recommendations that I've heard from a few other people. S-P-O-H-R. She does a floss tube and quilt tube that I really like. And um, she mentioned a lady called Chantal who sells a lot of things on her Etsy shop that she cuts from with with a laser machine. And they're like ways you can finish backer boards and things for your cross stitch projects and frames. Cute little things. One that I really want to buy. It looks like a tobacco basket. And she also does like dial sun sun dials to wrap your floss on and instead of buying a whole bunch of or making like I did. Um, floss drops. It's a place to to organize your thread. It's one 141, 141 design company. Chantal Demling. And what I really like about her is she's pretty down to earth. I have no idea where she lives, but her lives are done in a room that's very lodge and up north feeling, real woodsy feeling, um, which is very popular decor up here. My house is not like that, um, even though I live up north and my husband has not taxidermied a deer and put it in the house because I told him I didn't really like it, even though I grew up with that. But Chantal is so sweet. It's um, She does have a taxidermy deer head. But in the live, she has like all kind of lodge things mixed in with her really cute makes. Some of them are cross stitch. She did a Lori Holt um, Granny Square lampshade, which I saw during the great Granny Square along all summer, as well as all of her dogs. She has three dogs that were <laughs> in on the floss tube. So that was fun on her live. And now she has other ones where she does in another room. I'm assuming it's like a dining room or a family room where she showcases her finishes on um, tiered trays, which I had to go buy one. I'll tell you about that in a second, as well as shelves and stuff. So it's super cute. Some of the things are a little more farmhouse than what I would do, but she has some really good ideas. And the things that she stitches, and she has a team of people that will stitch things, and then she will showcase them in her finished, to, for what they call FFOs, fully finished objects, with these painted wood products that she cuts out. And um, but the ones that she personally does are very diverse from real primitive things to things that are pretty modern. So I like Chantal and I'm kind of searching for people who are doing quilty tubes. So if you know of anybody who's doing in the format of a floss tube where people just show what they're working on. And I like the whole whip parade and in September they're doing fall parades and they're going to be October parades for floss tube where people are just showing their works in progress that are themed. Um, kind of looking for those kinds of people on YouTube. A lot of floss tube people quilt so they'll do like both floss tube stuff which is all the cross stitch and then show some of their quilting projects in at the end. So that's what um, my recommendations for YouTube. Um, I did watch a ton of things about the Queen and her funeral. I happened to have that day off as a vacation day and I went down a huge rabbit hole not only watching the whole um, formal processions and her, the funeral. I got up early and watched it. But then since then, I've, I have forgotten a lot about the monarchy and how it works in England and um, about the family and their rules and for, de, you know, 
decorum, I guess. And so I found that interesting. I really, I like to do that. I'm one of these people that get on a subject. And I'm glad that my husband is like this too, because we will watch all kinds of things down a rabbit hole until you exhaust yourself on knowing everything there is about that particular project and then you move on. So another recommendation I have is I have thoroughly enjoyed the Lord of the Rings um, series on Amazon. It's a telling of the story before the Lord of the Rings um, and developing uh, these backstories. I'm sure they're totally not based at all in Tolkien's um, thoughts, but I mean, that's okay because those were like, they were, they're published as books, but they were more like um, his his thoughts and he put them down on paper and it's when he came up with Elvish and all the genealogy of the races that led to the massive culmination of Lord of the Rings with the hobbits and the elves and man and the wizards and all of that. So this is super fun. I like it. It's, it's great. There's a lot of controversy about it because people are being people. And I don't want to get into the controversies too much, but it has casting of people in um, parts that are not white. And I find that absolutely ridiculous. But there are other things about it that there are people are like, but it's not sticking to Tolkien's backstory too, in addition to the other parts. And I'm like, who cares? Take it for what it is. It's fantasy. And it's a well done, highly produced um, show that I'm enjoying. The special effects, even for a TV show, is outstanding. They're spending a ton of money producing these, and I will continue to watch it. Love the story and love the whole taking me back to the nostalgia of my fandom with Lord of the Rings. So that's been a lot of fun. And if you enjoy Lord of the Rings, you might like it. Now, where I'm going from here is what I want to work on. I am trying to not be impulsive, but I realized my piecing, I'm way out of practice with my quilt piecing. And since I'm watching a lot of floss tubes, I do have a couple of September... I did the whole um, You Are the Boss stitch along and I completed that and I did finish the center, but I didn't put You Are the Boss of Your Own Quilt. I decided to use the free alphabet and stitch Breaking Up with Perfection. And I really like how it finished and it's not perfect. It has a couple of big mistakes and I'm very proud of that stitch it was hard it was really hard on my brain and it was great for rehabbing my brain and and something I could do one x at a time as my therapy during the early days of recuperating from COVID and long COVID so I started that in August so I did a sunflower September was something that I was working on for my cross stitch and I did one petite sunflower. That's all I got done, but that's okay. I did a sunflower. And so for October, I'm working on, um, I wanted to do bats and boos, but I couldn't read the chart. I just can't. It's done with, it's a free pattern. It's still on Fat Quarter Shop. So I went out on the internet and found two tiny, they're probably three or four inch, three inch square. No, I bet they're four, four inch squares that are Halloween themed. And I thought, wouldn't they make really cute little pillows to go on the tiered tray I found on sale at Michael's. We did a little trip to Costco last weekend and the tiered tray I wanted was in fact at Hobby Lobby. And I don't have Hobby Lobby right now because the tornado destroyed it. And it was, um, no, I bought the tiered tray from Michael's when it was on sale through 
their website, I got an email and I dug out an old um, Amish made by a very young girl, Wicker Lazy Susan, that's put on a very solid wood base. So I put the tray in it and I have my little amigurumi pumpkins in there and I have um, my gla very expensive glad hand blown pumpkin. It's a glass pumpkin. It's amber. And I have a couple of other fall things that I have that are vintage, like little plastic gothic candelabra that's very tiny is in there and I thought these would fit perfectly on that tiered tray. It's two tiers and I can spin it around because it's on that lazy Susan and it fits perfectly on my table. It is not big. It's it's maybe 12 inches across at the bottom and I got it on a great price on sale. But then last weekend we did go to Hobby Lobby because I wanted to find a couple picture frames as options for my You Are the Boss pattern um, that is now breaking up with perfection. And I found a blue pumpkin that's in that tiered tray also. So I'm, future projects is that I'm working on the two little Halloween pillows that are going to be like four inches. And that's a thing right now with people who do stitching and even those granny squares. I could crochet one up or go through the ones I have to see if there's one that looks fall themed and put it in that little tiered tray. You can use them as pin cushions if you want to. So the other thing that I saw, Kimberly Jelly announced yesterday, um, I watched her Friday live, after live, you know, on the replay, and they have announced the Socialites 2 free quilt along that's going to be posted one block a week in three different sizes, three, six, and nine inch blocks. She revealed the layout and I really like the layout except for the corners. So there are going to be 24 different quilt blocks. This is going to be a sampler. They're set in the center of a star, which you know me, I love stars. It looks like it's in a diamond shape, which I love that layout. But in those very corners are four friendship stars. And if you know me, I am not a huge fan of friendship stars. And they're not easy to make to have all the points come together properly and look like a star. So I'm thinking of using that tri rec ruler and making some sort of other shape with it, or maybe completely forgetting about that and leaving the corners blank or putting some other fussy cuts in the corners of the quilts. I don't know, but I really like one block a week is very, very doable. And, um, social lights last year was super popular. It's got lots of different, quilt designers and last year's was very, very successful and had lots of really cool blocks. And it's a sampler, which is good to refresh your memory that has everything from beginner blocks in this all the way up to a little more advanced blocks. And you can look at the fabric requirements. If you are not using scraps, she'll tell you how many fat quarters or whatever yardage you want, but I'm using scraps. I am busting my um, stash doing different things. And this will be a great way to refresh my poor, poor sewing um, skills for making a piecing. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh my gosh. Those, when I look at those um, flying geese, I'm like, seriously, there was a time I, I've done really advanced things. Uh, I even started that Dear Jane and got through the first 12 paper piecing. Anyway, I digress again and come back to Socialites. I am on Kimberly Jolly's blog, which is the Jolly Jabber. And September 29th is the announcing the free Socialites to quilt along. Now, Kimberly is doing something that is not yet revealed and I'm intrigued because she and you got to watch the entire um, socialites presentation on her Friday 
video to to understand but she's going to do some of the blocks in three inches some of the blocks in six and some of the blocks in nine and do a little bit different layout they even did a little clip of all the designers which i had a super super fun time so i really like this with six inch blocks are my favorite to make and you know you may not bust a lot of stash on it but you can there are some friendship stars in the center of it but there the center blocks have the front uh, the center stars each have one of your sampler blocks in the center and they're ohio stars which are some of my absolute favorite to make too it's the corner ones that um i may do something different I don't know or maybe i'll suck it up and actually try to learn how to do a friendship star without it looking like a disaster <laughs> and she of course gives all the optional um, foundation papers like triangles on a roll and some of their other foundation paper piece things for like flying geese which i might buy and all of the designers um there's so many it's probably 24 different designers and people I've heard of, people I haven't heard of, but they're all very, very good. And the patterns are usually extremely well done for Fat Quarter Shop. So I'm think, I'm thinking, I'm well, no thinking. I'm going to do social lights too. It's, I think I can do it in 24 weeks and have it finished um, with all of the stars, you know, over the course of next summer. That's my future project. So if you want to do it, it's free. Go to Fat Quarter Shop because you know what? Every block, she's also doing a video, a short video on how to sew it and what papers and things. So I'm going to watch the video, refresh my memory, and then try sewing it. I'm, I'm telling you, all this free education out there by craft people is amazing. It'll be like taking a 24-week class and I don't ever have to leave home, but I do need to leave home once in a while, but not for a class. So I'm working on gathering some fabric from my stash to, to kind of have, you know, get a feel for what kind of colors I want to do. I do have some charm packs that I bought for doing hexagons, which I'm going to do over the winter. And I'm not going to use those. I'm going to bust stash for the so socialites. So that concludes all of the things that I wanted to talk about on today's podcast. I've had a few bumps in the road over the last month with my health, but it's coming along. Um, all I can say is that it's not a linear um, journey when you're navigating long COVID and there are good days and bad days and of course I have some underlying other illnesses and or what do you want to call it? diseases and autoimmune stuff which has uh, been waiting to flare up since I got <laughs> sick and it kind of flared up on me a little bit this last week with my middle ear problem but the good news is I don't have vertigo but it's brought on some other things so I am taking care of myself and I have found that is the one joy of being an empty nester and at the point in life where I am is that when I need to take a whole weekend and just do self-care, I can without a lot of stress. This is the most stress-free I've been in my life. My job is I've been there a long time and it's not been as stressful as it can be there are some things with uh, upcoming accrediting that i've helped with but that's not been super stressful um been working on mindfulness and deep breathing and walking as many steps as they can i've gotten in my little home gym a couple of times i went off my inhalers and had a bad day because i really needed it went back on them because it's not time yet. So there's been a lot of those kinds of things happening and in it's all part of the process, but in my brain, I should be 
um, over it by now, right? You know, so we, this is how our brains trick us. And when I look at the calendar, it really hasn't been that many months. So I am doing much, much better physically and I feel good some days and some days like yesterday, I stayed home because that's the first day I've called off, called in sick. And the beauty of yesterday was there wasn't a lot that I had to do at work and I had that luxury and lots of vacation and sick hours that I can call off. But with all that to be said is that we all need to take care of ourselves. Even when you have a lot of responsibilities like children at home or pets, there are a lot of responsibility. I don't have pets anymore because of my health and having to take them outside in a blizzard. I didn't get another dog um, after my last one passed away and I sure miss them sometimes. But I've gone to being the crazy plant lady and I have lots of plants and they're doing very well, thank you. And I've also decided that I need to take care of myself way better than I have in years past. So that's what I've been doing and enjoying football and enjoying cooking a little bit more for just two people is phenomenal. My home chef has been a great blessing. And so this weekend is my stay at home retreat. My husband did go out of town for a Highland game. It's the last, he's judging, it's the last Highland game that he's attending in any way for the season. And then we will have the long winter and we have lots of plans. Did I tell you that for his birthday, we got tickets to go see Loverboy and Night Ranger at one of the casinos that's about an hour from here. And then we're going to go to a hockey game. I haven't done anything like that in so long. I'm really, really looking forward to our getaway. And we're actually talking about a vacation in the spring. I'm not sure yet what we're going to do, but it's sure been fun dreaming. And I've also been, we've been talking about what we want to do in retirement in about six years. You know, you got a plan for these things. And at first we were like, what about motorhomes? Oh my gosh. I saw the price of them, the maintenance and all of the gas costs. So now we're flip-flopping and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be fun to be part of a Mini Cooper car club where you do epic road trips in the summer with cars that get great gas mileage. If you own a Mini Cooper, let me know all the things that I should know. I'm just dreaming right now and looking at cars, but I'm like, they're a lot less money than a motorhome. <laughs> and you know me, I don't enjoy camping. So this would be a fun thing for epic road trips and a Mini Cooper and a suitcase in the back. I, I don't know. It sounds very romantic to me. So that's what I've been up to. And I'm going to go get myself a hot cup of tea and turn on the University of Michigan football game and start stitching and sewing and doing all of the things to, to just really recharge my batteries and to get back into crafting and creating. Let me know if you're going to do the social lights too. Um, they have a Facebook group. I really want to get going on joining it because I'm going to need to plan. October 21st is going to be here before you know it. Everybody have a most wonderful week. I, my heart goes out to anyone who may have friends or family or themselves in the hurricane and just let us know if there's anything we can do to help the other thing is um take care of yourself be safe take time to do some stitching or creating every day because it sure has helped me achieve balance quilt on everyone